No nonsense know how here and today I'm working on this truck camper I just picked up yesterday. The furnace is the only appliance that's uh, not working so I figured I'd do a quick video and troubleshoot this show you guys what I find to be the problem. I already messed with it a little bit didn't find the problem yet but uh, let me go through the steps I took and bring you to where I'm at and hopefully this video will help you fix your heater. This happens to be a Atwood uh, but it's just a little propane heater. Now your first step is going to be making sure that you've went and turned your propane tanks on and then come over to your oven and try to spark up your stove top. Boom, we can see that lit up so we know we have plenty of propane and fresh propane in the lines. So then come over to your thermostat and set this to the full hot position. Click this switch over uh, right there. Boom, we've heard the furnace kick on the fan. From what I understand, usually it will do that to purge the combustion chamber of, uh, you know, get fresh air in there. But let's listen. About 10 seconds in. Boom. You heard it hit the propane valve there, and you hear the igniter going. So, now it will try doing that. It's not lighting up. It's not getting hot. It will try doing that three times. So my next step was, I came outside the camper, and without burning your face off, I'm standing out here now listening and boom I hear that go again so and I with my face back here I could smell propane so I know I'm getting propane to the heater and it sounds like I'm getting ignition. It's now trying for the third time and after this third time it doesn't light it's going to detect that and it's going to trip and you'll see a red light start blinking in there. So to pop the cover off, you got this little plastic connector on here. You, you twist that, and mine actually broke because of the old dry routed plastic. But uh, with that off, you just pull this out and then lift up. Simple enough. And you can see that red light blinking back there. So here's your reset. And you can put that off and then reset it if you want. I'm going to go turn my thermostat off too. And then on the outside of the camper, we are going to shut the propane off completely. Next step I took was I, you could use a stethoscope or this screwdriver, but I put it on the end of each of these solenoids. There's two of them. And I wanted to make sure both of these propane solenoids were clicking on. They indeed were. So then I came over to the fuse box. And if you read, it says a uh, furnace, two 10 amps. So let's yank these out. That way we don't short anything when we go digging around inside of here. And moving right along, I then wanted to verify that the igniter was working. I can hear it going. So you got, uh, oh, by the way, this is a model 7920-II or two. Um, so for what that's worth. But you got these quarter inch, you could use a flathead or a quarter inch on these. And took these two off and then and pop your circuit board down. And just behind that, you then have two more of those quarter inch head screws on this I guess this is like a thermal plate on your igniter and behind that holding the igniter in is also quarter inches and make sure when you take them out you use a magnet so you don't go dropping that uh, screw down into the, the furnace anywhere and boom and you can see by this picture that's how in case you do take your igniter out I think it only goes in one way but it goes with the short side on the left Looking at it, if you got the same camper. And my next step, just to make sure that this spark was definitely getting to these electrodes, is I grounded this out on the case, and then I actually fired the heater back up, and I made sure I was getting a nice spark between those electrodes. I indeed was. Uh, so at this point, I know I'm smelling fuel out there, so I'm thinking it must just be dirt and grime in there. So I took this six quarter inch head bolts from this whole surrounding uh, plate right here because I'd like to just take this, this orifice tube off right here but you can see those screws come in from the back side. Uh, and then I had a quarter inch on this too. And this is the point at which I am and I uh, haven't gone any further than this. I'm guessing we're going to find some kind of blockage in there or a nest or anything else but let's find out. So now uh, on this propane line, again make sure you have your propane off and crack this flare nut loose. Boom, we got no pressure coming out. That's always a good thing, right? And with all those screws out, I'm hoping this gasket doesn't tear on the bottom too bad. Oh, it's like a uh, felt kind of thermal gasket. And well, we gotta get these wires off too. So let's remember how that went, right? You got the 
Reds on the outside. Red to number one and four. Man, these spades are on there. Oh, it's good though, right? Oof, all right, let me get a pair of pliers. Oh, yeah. So the red's on the outside and the yellows stay there. You could take all these wires off if you want. But let's see. All right, boom. That is what our burner looks like. Little something on there. We'll go take that in the garage. Now you can get a good look inside of the combustion chamber. Uh, it does look like got some flies and debris on the bottom, if you can see that. So I'll clean that stuff up. But uh, nothing else out of the ordinary. Looks pretty tight in there. Before we go on to cleaning the orifices in there, I will mention, depending on your heater, I don't know if mine has it or not. Again, I'm really not an RV tech by any means, but they should have two safety switches. One is called a sail switch, and that uh, tells the, com the computer board if the fan is blowing. So you have uh, the fan blowing. And then the other one is uh, over temp, which is probably that right there. That's either like, yeah, that's probably the over temp, or maybe that is actually the light that detects the flame, but either way, I'm not sure. I'm gonna say those sail switch and the over temp switch are working though, because it is clicking the propane valves on and it is trying to ignite it. It's just not igniting. And then it's determining that, which is probably from the uh, light sensor. There's actually another word for those. But uh, yeah, these look like stink bugs too. I've got a couple more up here. So let's go tear into this thing now. And luckily it doesn't seem like this felt gasket really tore too much uh, I would suggest you probably replace this every time you take this out uh, I think that's probably a good call and with this gasket plate still came off in pretty good shape you can now see those two quarter inch we're gonna take these off there is the orifice and it looks clean unfortunately I don't like the sight of that. So I'm not sure where this thing ain't lighting up. Now that's leading me to believe that I might be wasting my time and maybe it's actually just one of those sensors that's not detecting the flame. Let's take this orifice out anyway and make sure there's nothing behind it. Blocking. Path of travel. No, this thing looks clean. Tidy and clean. It's funny, I did originally try to take this uh, hex off but it would not budge and it was just going to strip because i was thinking you yeah, know they got that hex there and i'll just be able to poke through the orifice but uh that would have been a simple fix it was not and everything's seeming pretty good here another possibility i just thought of is that this regulator oh actually well, it doesn't seem to be any adjustment oh all right so the regulators inside of here this could just need some adjustment too so we might go back to that after we get this back together, but I don't see a reason. I mean, this guy said the heater always worked just fine. So I'm really reluctant to go tweaking with the adjustments on it. All right, well, I'm gonna slap this back together and try it out again, because clearly nothing's wrong in here. I have one last idea. My main regulator could be low, and I just turned my oven on. Check this out. If I put all these burners on, boom. They, that one won't even come on now. So they're all, they're pretty low. That's like, it's pretty low for high, I would have to say. And if I put it on low, it goes out. So check this out. Let's see if what happens to these flames if we turn them off. Oh, boom. Yeah, see, so that's, that's high. So I'm starting to think I have a propane regulator issue. I'm not getting enough pressure. And here's my regulator. Now, I don't know if you noticed a little bit of oil residue beneath this switching valve. Uh, I don't ever smell propane in here or anything, but that's probably not a good idea or a good thing, so I'll probably replace that. Um, but this looks like it is adjustable. It's regulating. And it's got a hex in there. So, yeah, I don't know how to check the pressure on this, though. I don't have anything to check that. Well, what the heck? Let's turn it in a little bit. So here goes, half turn to the right, and half turn further. I think that bumps the pressure up. Let's find out what the stove does now. Let's 
Stove is doing the same thing. I get a real low burn on all this. Oh yeah, with the one burner on, look what it does. When that tries to fire, this one burner goes way down. I don't think I have enough flow. You wouldn't believe this. I think I just found the problem. Oh my God, what a rookie move. I went to go check these tanks because I'm thinking, uh, you know, this says it's half full. Let me see how much poundage it has or how heavy it is. So I took this one off and I go to start pulling it out. And then I'm trying to pull this and I'm like, well, this won't fold out of here. And look at what I found in the back. Let me get you a good view of this. You see that? That hose is kinked. Kinked in the back. Ah, that would make total sense. Let's get that unkinked and then find out if we got uh, good flow then. Oh yeah, whoever last put these tanks in, just put a straight kink in that hose. Oh, this is gonna be a great video, I'll tell you what. Yeah, so this has got plenty of propane in here. And I mean, just look at that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, let's fire the heater up. I have a feeling she's going to start up. Here we go. Moment of truth. Get my finger on the off in case this thing blows up, right? Oh, boom. Fired right up. Yeah. Man. All that over a freaking kinked line in the tank. Ah! You know, I didn't put those tanks in though, so I never even thought to check that. I should have thought though, when I saw the oven not working great. I've never owned an RV though, so I didn't, I thought it was pretty normal. But, oh yeah, this thing's cooking too. She's blowing nice and hot. I, I heard that flame immediately fire up. So, heater works good. What really got me tripping on this is everything else worked. The refrigerator ignited up, the hot water heater ignited, ran fine, the burners worked. Uh, it wasn't until I tried lighting all three burners. I mean, I even had the hot water on with the refrigerator too, but it was the heater that was the only one that wouldn't run. So I suppose that thing burns quite a bit of propane. Uh, it has a pretty big orifice jet in there. So that, that's what really, I mean, that's why I never even looked into a supply problem because everything else worked. Well, that certainly wraps this up. I'm gonna get this put back together. I'm still kind of happy I went through what I did with that because now I have a very good understanding of how this heater works and hopefully uh, this video helped somebody out and showed you some basic diagnostics uh, but yeah definitely check your flow first uh, check for a kinked hose so drop the video a thumbs up if it helped you out consider checking out my channel comment and I don't even know if I'm gonna put this video up because it's kind of embarrassing but I think I probably will wait till next time this is Chris Brown here KZ guy too no nonsense no how any of the above and that is how you diagnose your heater not working in a camper or truck camper at wood heater check for a king toes i'll see you next time